Hey guys, it's John Ribs here. Welcome back to my Long War 2 class review series. Today we're looking at the mid-game Grenadier. Um, Grenadier is an early game we said were mediocre. We settled on rapid deployment, heavy ordnance, blue screen bombs as our perk choices, and the only ones that I thought were questionable there were you might take Sapper at Lance Corporal, although you don't expect that soldier to scale quite as well and you might take Formidable at Sargent. And I think Formidable and Blue Screen Bombs are somewhat comparable in power, but I think Blue Screen Bombs is a little bit more flexible, especially if you're building soldiers the same way that I do, you already have Formidable on several other soldiers. So if you need to bait explosives, which is one of the coolest things Formidable is good at, you're going to be able to do it with a couple of other soldiers and don't need Formidable on the Grenadier as much. So. We've decided with blue screen bombs that our grenadier is not really going to be an off tank. We have to equip consumables to grenadier for it to do anything because it's all built around the grenade launcher and that uses consumables, which means we might be able to fit in one defensive plating or vest, but we're not going to get much more than that. A defensive AWC perk or something like that could help a grenadier out a lot fortify from the AWC, resilience, etc. If our Grenadier isn't going to be an off tank though, it's a very loose soldier. Like, it's almost something we have to protect like it's a sharpshooter, except that its consumables don't have squad sight. So Grenadiers can be very awkward to convincingly work into squad-based combat. And on a lot of missions, I'll have like my Grenadier take a hit and then all of a sudden my Grenadier has to be hunkered in heavy cover 20 tiles away from the enemy. And it's not like the Grenadier does anything anyway, <laughs> so, so it ends up being sort of all right. But it, it's something to consider. Grenadiers in fights don't quite operate like any other soldier in my experience. The reason that we're bringing Grenadiers at all is how incredible their consumables can be in breakdown situations. And even though they have a three out of 10 alpha strike rating in mid game, in my opinion, meaning they're just not good at all at killing stuff, um, eight out of 10 in breakdowns reflects my opinion of the strength of dense smoke and sting grenades. These soldiers have some of the most impressive consumables in the game, and they are somewhat expensive to get. You don't have to build smoke grenades or flashbangs, but leveling up a grenadier all the way to tech sergeant does take a concerted amount of effort and will make squads weaker overall. But once you have these consumables, there's nothing else in the game that really does quite what they do. And having a grenadier as sort of the last soldier in a squad, once you already have a team capable of alpha striking in regular situations, lets you ensure that you're going to be safe in a situation which isn't regular, where like multiple pods come in at the same time or something like that. A Grenadier will be extremely useful if you're getting flanked, if you have a huge mob of enemies you need to control, etc. Um, the perk decisions are so simple at these two level ups that I'm going to talk sort of broad scope a little bit more for the Grenadier. Um, I'm not taking any damage perks on the Grenadier, and there is an entire, well, an almost entire left side of the tree dedicated toward damage. We could go boosted cores, heat warheads, and biggest booms, and be dealing quite a lot of damage with grenades. And this is a build which I have used in Long War in previous iterations of the game. I'm not using it in this iteration of the game because of the missions that I'm going on. I go on lots of extremely light to light missions, and then I go on a few very, very difficult missions at the end of the campaign, but at that point I have soldiers who are master sergeants, and the missions are so long that a grenadier's consumables run out anyway. So in my experience, grenadiers built for damage don't quite fit what the game is asking you to do in this patch. That doesn't mean that the build is terrible. If you're fighting a like moderate strength mission and you have five soldiers or whatever and you need good reliable damage output, a Grenadier built for damage actually does really well. Uh, the only thing is that you don't really get asked to fight that mission in Long War 2 1.4. So 
keep an eye on that because the left side of the tree does offer some strength for sure. Um, just it's unimpressive when you're only being asked to run lighter strength missions or gargantuan very long missions with the Grenadier runs out of consumables. So at Staff Sergeant, we have Heat Warheads, Tandem Warheads, and Dense Smoke. Heat Warheads and Tandem Warheads are both mediocre increases to grenade damage. And there isn't too much more exciting than that. Heat Warheads has extra shred on frags, which could be interesting if for some reason you weren't taking shredder ammo on your other classes. But I think you should be. And I also don't think you should be bringing frags on your grenadiers. They're going to be the fourth best type of grenade by the time you hit tech sergeant and that's just not very exciting uh you probably only bring three grenades so that you have room for one plate in my opinion i think you probably want to have one plate on most of your grenadiers and nanoscale to reduce crit chance against you is i think very valuable so heat warheads has like some some value for sure and tandem warheads has a little bit of value to um, Tandem Warheads is not the best because only your minimum damage falls off in Long War 2. So the further you are from the center of the blast radius, the lower damage you could take, but you can still always roll the max damage. It's not a uniform distribution, so it ends up being slightly better than you might think, but going from 2 to 5 damage on a frag grenade to 1 to 5 damage on the frag grenade uh, is, is not that exciting or the other way around, whatever. Um, it's just not a very big deal. So Tandem Warheads is not a great perk on a frag grenade and then on like a gas grenade, it doesn't affect the damage over time. So it's an even worse perk because so much of your damage on the damage over time application grenades is based on, you know, the actual burn or poison or whatever. So dismiss tandem warheads and we look at dense smoke at staff sergeant which i've rated two out of ten for alpha striking and nine out of ten for breakdowns two out of ten for alpha striking it doesn't deal any damage but it's so good that it lets your soldiers stand on tiles they wouldn't otherwise be able to safely stand on in order to deal damage better so it actually enables your squad to deal a little bit more damage uh often perks like formidable and dense smoke here are getting a little bit of alpha strike rating because they let you position in ways that which would otherwise not really be supportable uh dense smoke is one of the reasons why you'd be excited to bring a grenadier on a mission in 1.4 in my opinion it's just an additional 10 defense and that might not seem like very much and smoke grenades one of the really valuable things they do is remove the extra crit chance that enemies have against you because of you being exposed so, you know, it doesn't add anything to that. So a regular smoke grenade is already giving 20 defense and removing crit chance, I believe. And dense smoke is giving an extra 10 up to 30. Yeah, extra 10 up to 30. The thing is that the aim formulas in this game are additive. And so this is a place where you can get 10 defense. So it's minus 10 chance for enemies to hit your soldier that cannot be added by any other ability in the game. If there are lots of different ways to throw a smoke grenade on a soldier, you can't add those together because you can only smoke the soldier once. You can't bring three specialists and aid protocol a soldier once, and you can't fortify with a soldier three times a turn or hunker three times a turn. So when you're putting together these abilities to try to make a soldier safe from incoming fire, the fact that this is an extra 10 defense which cannot be created by any other ability in the game but can be added to the defense from all the other abilities in the game makes a really big deal and you start to reach situations where you're actually starting to break the way that the aim system can work if you get 30 defense from a dense smoke uh, another 25 defense from an aid protocol 20 defense from a fortify on a soldier who already has a little bit of base defense and maybe a defense PCS, you can have a soldier who is standing out of cover with 100 defense very easily. And I, like, we didn't even get up to some of the other ways that you can give defense to a soldier. I'm pretty sure. There aren't that many. That's, that's why Dense Smoke is so cool. Um, 
So you can use Dense Smoke to really, really elevate your ability to manipulate combat situations um, by stacking defense. And if you're excited about Dense Smoke, it's likely because you're interested in doing something like that. It's also just a very valuable perk if your squad is in trouble, getting shot at, throw a, a grenade at the squad and dense smoke plus 10 defense is likely to be reducing incoming damage against your squad by something like 50%. So usually when XCOM has their regular defense bonuses and stuff and is in a regular smoke grenade, in my experience, enemies have like somewhere in the 20% range to hit you, more or less. And that means that adding an extra 10 defense, it's additive. Now they have 10% chance to hit you. You've actually reduced incoming damage against your squad by 50% with this one perk. So 10 defense might not sound like a huge number, but if you look at the situations where this is actually used and what it does, like either entirely breaking the aim formula in the game or like at worst, um, doing something like having incoming damage against you. <laughs> Both of those things seem pretty good. And that is why I'm very excited to pick Dense Smoke here on Grenadiers. I usually only even have one smoke grenade like equipped to a Grenadier for almost the entire campaign, but you typically are only going to need one on a mission. If your squad's set up to deal damage well, then Usually it only takes one turn for you to get out of dodge in my experience. Again, that's a, that's a matter of what sort of missions you're being able to, asked to play as well, because they're mostly light missions, and so there just aren't that many enemies for you to kill. At Tech Sergeant, we're picking between Biggest Booms, Chain Shot, and Sting Grenades. And it would be really interesting to think about taking Chain Shot at Tech Sergeant. It really, really would. Um, take a shot with an aim penalty of minus 10. Let's talk about this for a little bit because it's interesting. Um, the way that... <laughs> We're right back to the aim formula again, uh-oh. Yeah, the way that aim works in this game, though, is additive. And so minus 10 chance to hit for a chain shot on a soldier who has like an elite scope and good aim scaling and an aim PCS and was built out of a soldier with high aim to begin with is not as big a deal as minus 10 chance to hit is going to be on a Grenadier. It's easy to look at this perk and think this perk is so strong that I'm going to take it for rifle damage even though I'm not supporting it anywhere else on the tree. And theoretically you're dealing quite a lot of rifle damage if you take chain shot. But Grenadiers are just not effective damage dealers with their guns because their aim doesn't scale well enough and because you're not taking other perks to support them dealing damage with their guns. And so Chain Shot really, really falls short. It just, it's disappointing. It's a double shot perk and you really want that to like double your output. But one, there's the minus 10 aim and the chance of completely failing to take the second shot. So you're not actually doubling your output. And two, your output with the gun is crap because your soldier hasn't built enough aim to hit things. So too bad on chain shot. I gave it a five out of 10 for alpha and breakdown, I guess, because I was feeling really generous. The place that you would pick this would be if you had an extremely high aim grenadier who took center mass at corporal because they had quick study in the AWC and you wanted to train pistol perks. That is how I would end up at Chain Shot if I had like high aim plus an AWC perk, which took me into training lots of stuff and maybe got a good offensive perk for shooting as well. Um, I don't even know what that would be. Maybe Lone Wolf would help. Something, something that gave me some extra aim would be what I was looking for there. Yeah, that's never actually happened for me, but it's something to keep in mind. It could happen. Biggest Booms gives a uh, crit chance on your grenades and explosions just in general. 50% chance for plus two damage. One of the reasons that an offensive grenade build was a lot stronger in earlier versions of the game was that this could apply to damage over time. So if you poisoned everything, every time it ticked, there was a 50% chance of the tick dealing an extra two damage. 
and it's easy to dismiss offensive grenade damage right now because there aren't really places where you need it and it's toned low enough that it isn't abusive but yeah ticking for an extra two damage half the time with gas grenades was absurd so biggest booms was once a very strong perk i gave it five out of ten for alpha and two out of ten for breakdowns now which is is not particularly good for a perk which basically only deals damage you'd really want it to you know deal more damage than this Stink grenades make our flashbang grenades have a 50% chance to stun enemies for one turn in the flashbang's area of effect. I hate the inconsistencies in how the game like decides how to tell you how long stuns last, but this is for two actions. So that that is one turn for enemies, basically. Yeah, anyway, the, the way that this lock is written makes sense. It's the way that the rest of the game reports it that doesn't make sense. Because if you sting grenade something, it will say stunned two. And what that means is that it's stunned for two actions. And since everybody gets two actions every turn, it'll be up a turn from now. So this is insane. That's, that's absolutely crazy. Flashbang grenades have very high area of effect. And we do have volatile mix on the tree at Gunnery Sergeant. And we have a grenade launcher, which raises the area of effect of our grenades. And being able to stun enemies for a turn basically extends your alpha strike. The most important mechanic in the game for beating missions cleanly is like damage dealing to threats and getting all of the threats dead before they can do nasty things for you. And if you sting grenade um, a cluster of like four to five enemies, and two or three of them are stunned for a turn, all of a sudden the amount of damage you need to deal to be absolutely safe drops by 50%. And that's crazy because the fact that you only have to deal 50% as much damage to be absolutely safe enables you to move more freely and actually operate better. It means you can position soldiers to be safe against yellow alert actions from another direction. If that's something you need to worry about, you can just flank yourself against the pod you're fighting and take cover against the incoming threat. Or if there isn't an incoming threat, it means you can leave cover against the pod that you're fighting to get better proximity bonuses with your gunfire or get into positions to use cone attacks more effectively and stuff like that. So... <laughs> So sting grenades are very, very, very good. Uh, it's on top of the flashbang effect too. And we took blue screen bombs, so they disorient robots. So, and, oh, we also have rapid deployment, so we're doing it as a free action. So a sting grenade is typically, I would say, the best action that you're taking in the entire game in mid game. Once we get to late game, maybe you'll have some AoE damage that's a better action. Bunker Buster can be a better action if you're supporting it with enough damage. Like, Shredstorm Cannon can be a better action, but its AoE isn't as good. Sting Grenades are, like, like wow. Like, sting grenades are very, 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 very good. Um, they're not something that you have to have to win a campaign, and it's completely fine not to have grenadiers in your teams, but having access to sting grenades is a large part of why you would go out of your way to put together a grenadier. And so with this build, you know, lock in sting grenades, which I rated as 6 out of 10 for alpha and 10 out of 10 for breakdowns, just insanely good with this build what we've done is basically tried to isolate the things which the grenadier does which can be broken we're trying to work off dense smoke for the additive defense bonuses sting grenades for the aoe stun just insanely powerful and heavy ordnance is enabling us to use incendiary grenades which are currently the strongest um offensive grenade in the game and are the strongest grenades in general on other soldiers because other soldiers don't get to use sting grenades. And that makes for, you know, this is a legitimately 
good soldier at this point in the campaign. I, It has a very low alpha strike rating because that's not what it's good at, but it is very good in breakdowns. Extremely good in breakdowns. Has extremely reliable crowd control on the incendiary grenade with actually quite good damage as well. Has the highest potential crowd control in the game at this stage of the campaign in sting grenades and has the best defensive ability in the game in dense smoke. And that's that's why you may want to consider a Grandir on your team in mid game. I would highly recommend though that you don't get into the mindset that you need to have a Grenadier for all of these abilities. Because if you have a team which is bare bones and isn't getting to that threshold where you can kill incoming pods easily, relying on a Grenadier to use consumables against every pod and needing the Grenadier to be using these consumables against every pod, you're almost always just going to run out of stuff on the Grenadier before the mission's over and then be in like a hell of a lot of trouble because the Grenadier can't do anything when the consumables aren't getting used. So I think of a Grenadier as the extra soldier on the team that makes us safe in all of the bad situations we might run into, but I don't want to add a Grenadier to a team which isn't already fully functional by itself in general. Anyway, that's mid-game Grenadiers. I hope you guys enjoyed the chat, and I will see you tomorrow. We'll be talking about the late game for Grenadiers. Excited? And uh, yeah, I'll see you there. <laughs>